Hello, this is Georgina Rose, and welcome back to the Dot Darling YouTube channel. On this channel, we discuss everything related to magic, mysticism, religion, and everything on the fringe of esoterica. I'm your host, Georgina Rose, part-time esoteric content creator and part-time surfer of the Enochian Aethers. And in this video, I'm going to be continuing my planetary magic series. That is where I go through all seven classical planets and discuss the occult mysteries of each planet and how to work with them in a metaphysical and magical sense. And in this video, I'm going to be talking about Jupiter. This is actually one of the most challenging videos to make in the series because I think people really misunderstand Jupiter in a way that they don't misunderstand the other planets. But before I get into the main video, I would like to mention that I am hosting a group trip with Proba Trip to Greece. There are still some slots, so sign up below if you want to come to Greece with me and my amazing subscribers to have some awesome spiritual experiences. Without further ado, Let's get into the video. So Jupiter as a planet is the largest planet in our little galaxy, right? We're all familiar with Jupiter. Jupiter is that big one, it's orange, right? And it's very, very gassy. Now, in terms of signs that are ruled by Jupiter, because that is important to get out of the way before we actually talk about the mysteries associated with Jupiter, that would be Sagittarius and Pisces. These two signs polarize themselves in a lot of interesting ways because Sagittarius is a fire sign and Pisces is a water sign. Now, they're just so different in so many ways. So the fact that both of these vastly different signs are under the same planet is something that really confuses people and I think is why people don't understand Jupiter. In fact, when I was preparing this video and thinking about what to talk about and I looked up, like I was like, okay, well, what are people doing with Jupiter magically? Because when I think of Jupiter, I think of money magic, right? And every single discussion was about money magic. There was almost no discussion on the other epithets of Jupiter and what Jupiter really means in a mysterious sense. Because of course money does have to do with Jupiter, but are we really going to pretend that an entire planetary sphere is just like the money sphere? That's a very human-centric view, and in polytheism and esotericism, it's important to step away from the human-centric view, because when you are dealing with spirits that are far beyond you, you don't want to be just viewing it through your narrow lens that is humanity. And humanity, obviously we care about money. I mean, if you're living in the West like I am, you live in a capitalist country, right? Money is important. Having money is power. And so it makes sense that there are a lot of metaphysical practices that have to do with increasing money. Even if you look at historic grimoires from centuries ago and even thousands of years ago, I mean, you see a lot of workings in there for money, right? But when we think about the signs that relate to Jupiter, and I actually had an amazing conversation. Um, it's not recorded, it's not online. It was an offline conversation with my fellow occult YouTuber, Amateur Magus, who is a personal friend of mine, who's a smaller channel, you should really check him out where after our conversation, I definitely knew a little bit more about what I was going to talk about in this video, because he really got me thinking about these two signs and using that as a jumping off point to understand Jupiter, right? Sagittarius and Pisces are confusing signs, right? We think of Sagittarius, we think of the archer, the hunter, the explorer, the adventurous, the bold, right? Um, but Sagittarius, it's, it's, a, it's a hunter, sure, but it's not a fighter, right? Sagittarius and Aries are two very fiery signs, but one is Jupiterian and one is Martial. And to understand the difference between the Martial and the Jupiterian, we look at what is actually related to the sign, right? Aries is, of course, a fellow energized, high energy, passionate, choleric sign, but it's much more focused on war and conflict, where Sagittarius is about exploration. And when we think about exploration, we start thinking about the nature of the psyche and what is really underneath what we understand about the world and ourselves, right? Sagittarius is more about exploration than conflict. While Sagittarius is choleric, it is intense, it is passionate, it is about using those things to explore yourself and look outwards, right? A sign that I think of a lot when I think of Sagittarius is Sagittarius in Venus. Venus is, of course, the planet of love. And when we look at someone who has a Sagittarius in Venus placement, when you think about the type of relationships they have, they are ones that are experimental and adventurous. They are seeking out new things, right? They're constantly trying to discover. And what is that? expand. Now, when we look at Pisces, Pisces is a water sign. Pisces is known as this kind of detached dreamer who is hard to understand, but they contrast with Aquarius, a sign ruled by Saturn that has similar epithets, in that Saturn is frustrated, right? Saturn wants to be understood, and Saturn is inherently restricted, and so Aquarius is restricted by its uniqueness, whereas Pisces is content in what it is, and Pisces is a highly emotional sign. And when you look into a Pisces, you interact with a Pisces, you'll understand they're always seeking for more. They're trying to understand themselves. And Pisces, for this reason, is most associated with dreams. And what happens in dreams? They are expansions of the psyche. See how I've been saying the word expansion a lot? 
That is the main term used to describe Jupiter. Jupiter is the planet of expansion and growth, right? Jupiter is physically large, right? That's a physical correspondence of that expansionary nature that we associate with Jupiter as a planetary sphere. And so when you engage with Jupiter, you are looking to expand and grow. And when we look at Vedic or Hindu interpretations of the planetary bodies, there's this really, really lovely Vedic planetary magic text that I read recently called The Greatness of Saturn, A Therapeutic Myth. Um, it's a really good book. I highly recommend it. It actually, the first part of it had nothing to do with Saturn. It was simply going through the spears and showing the Hindu myths that relate to each planetary sphere. And it actually described the way that the deities appeared in each of these myths. And Jupiter was depicted as very large, right? Jupiter was overweight, right? Now, I'm not saying if you work with Jupiter, you'll become overweight or something. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is Jupiter is ever growing. And that is not just in money, that is in all things. And so when we look at the actual planetary mysteries and the potential that you have as an occultist interacting with Jupiter, think about expanding new things. In American folk magic, specifically in the hoodoo tradition, there is the idea of a road opener spell. A road opener spell is a folk magic technique where you essentially open new pathways, new roads, new beginnings. And you do a road opener spell when either you are say moving or, you know, starting a new job, like going somewhere physically new, or if you're suffering with stagnancy, right? When we think of what is stagnant, we think of what is stuck, right? I have compared stagnancy to death in terms of spiritual progression. And when we think about that, we think of stagnancy as death, as nothing changing, as nothing growing, as, as not progressing on in our path. We can see Jupiter as the embodiment of life. And one way to look at all of metaphysics is through the Jungian idea of the life, death, and rebirth cycle. And on the life, death, and rebirth cycle that we are constantly going through, and we are constantly engaging with, we create ritual formulas, we can associate Jupiter with life and with the maturation towards adulthood in this metaphorical understanding of our lives and ourselves. And so approaching Jupiter is an inherently road opener type thing to do. You can approach Jupiter if you are stuck in life and unsure of where to go. You can approach Jupiter if you are moving and need a new life ahead of you. Jupiter is birth itself. And for this reason, Jupiter is considered a very benefic. Um, benefic, people think of malefic and benefic as good and bad. And while that is kind of a little bit true, it's more about what is creating and what is destroying, right? Jupiter is the planet of ultimate creation meaning that Jupiter also has to do with fertility epithets. In the modern world, fertility magic has kind of fallen to the wayside, right? In the ancient world, we understand that a lot of pagan religions were fundamentally fertility cults, right? It was about raising up crops, raising up children, right? Promulgation, whereas in the modern world, not really as necessary. Most people are professional laptop tappers in offices or working in like grocery stores or something. Most people are not like, you know, sowing the fields all day, though some people obviously do, and those people are great. So we don't think about like crops and whatnot. And with fertility, people have less kids nowadays, right? People, if anything, are trying to restrict their fertility more often. But fertility is still a metaphysical thing. And fertility has more to do with like, literally having children, though it does also have to do with that. If you are a woman and you suffer with infertility or conception issues, Jupiter would have a lot to do with that. While we often associate fertility with goddesses and the divine feminine, you know, takes two to tango. The divine masculine has a lot to do with that as well. And Jupiter highly relates to that idea. Now, another thing that has to do with Jupiter is the idea of leadership. So kingship is solar, right? When we think of the king, we think of the sun. But to say that rulership and leadership don't also have to do with Jupiter is missing a lot. You see, with Jupiter, it's no longer like a nobility type thing in the same way the sun is. The sun is about the ego, the noble, the virtuous, the aristocracy, whereas Jupiter, I see more as guiding a pack into creating something new. If you are a team leader or a manager at your office, you might really relate to Jupiter. Because when we look at the Greek, the Hellenistic equivalent to Jupiter, because obviously in planetary magic, we're using the Roman names, but we all know those Roman names are also Greek gods, right? We know there's a direct line there. We look to Zeus and Zeus is the king of the gods in the Greek world. And while like the sun in that religion is like associated with kingship and nobility, the actual leader is Jupiterian, right? Jupiter guides the pack and opens new doors because when you are leading a team, you're always having to create new possibilities and organize people. As well, because of this connection to Zeus, Jupiter has to do a lot with justice. Now, this is something we don't think about because litigation and contracts are mercurial. And obviously a lot of things to do with like rulership and government are solar due to that kingship relation. 
justice itself is actually a Jupiterian idea because Zeus has so much to do with justice. And if we look at parallels outside of the West and we turn to pre-Islamic era pagan religions, the parallel to Zeus and thus the parallel to Zup Jupiter is the entity Dushara. Dushara is a pre-Islamic era pagan god that is the son of two of the goddesses um, and is born. So there's some interesting kind of parallels with birth itself, right? The, the god was born. Um, and Dushara is a god of justice and what is right and what is lawful and what is correct. Not about the litigation process or lawyers or trials or the administration of justice through the penal system, but instead about the vague concept of justice. And so when we think about this expansion idea, because we always have to come back to expansion, when we're talking about Jupiter, what is the expansion of litigation? What is the expansion of the implementation? And what is the expansion of kingship? It is the abstract idea of justice, right? It is that high philosophical concept. And in a way, Jupiter has a lot to do with abstract philosophical concepts, right? We think of Sagittarius exploration and Pisces dreams. What are those things? Those are abstract concepts. And when we look at the Kabbalistic tree of life coming from Jewish mysticism, the spear that is related to Jupiter is not on the bottom, right? It's one of the higher spears. Now it is not one of the highest spears. It is Shokma, um, but it's it's up there, right? It's getting up higher and higher and higher, right? We're getting closer and closer to the top, closer and closer to the highest form and the highest understanding, right? We're getting more and more detached. And when you try to actually look at Jewish mystical texts that explain Chokmah, they're confusing to read, they're hard to understand. And so it's easier to just say, well, chokma is, and then translate it to what the Hebrew word means in English, instead of exploring the concept, like how we have said Jupiter equal money, instead of actually exploring what Jupiter truly represents. Now, going back to Zeus, because Jupiter is Zeus, one thing that Zeus has a lot to do with is purification and the eradication of miasma. And this is a concept that people really don't attach to planetary magic. It's typically brought into theurgic concepts and ceremonial magic and mysticism concepts, but all of those things overlap with planetary magic because since the planets rule all the spheres, really all magic can be tied back to planetary magic. And I would like to explain quickly the concept of miasma. If you're a longtime follower of mine, you know that miasma is an idea that I'm very attached to, that I very much believe in, and that I think can give us a lot of understanding of the world we are living in. And I think it is an affliction a lot of people have, but I'd like to dive into it deeper. So miasma is a Greek word that literally translates to pollution. So miasma itself is a force that kind of enters your soul and sullies you, right? You accrue miasma through going throughout your day and like getting your hands dirty, right? But you also accrue miasma through negative experiences that pollute your psyche. So many people say that miasma is a primitive form of germ theory, kind of one of those ancient ideas that just led to modern medicine and don't actually have a spiritual component. They're just like primitive physics, right? That's not true because miasma, while it is what people call like physical miasma, like getting dirty, and then of course you need a shower to get rid of the dirtiness, that is part of the miasma theory. Miasma is also a metaphysical thing. Miasma is feelings like envy, resentment, rage, all those negative type of emotions that pollute us. And there's a similar concept in Islamic Sufi mysticism called the purification of the hearts and the spiritual diseases of the hearts. There's a really great book on this called The Spiritual Diseases of the Heart that I really recommend everyone read. Now note, even though I'm a pagan, I am recommending an Islamic book. So just be aware that that's obviously not gonna have like all the same theological ideas that I would share and agree with, but there are enough parallels that I still think it's a worthy read because it does explain the need for spiritual purification very, very well. But basically it posits that our heart is a sort of representation of our body. And when we look at many systems that have like energy points like chakras, energetic bodies, bodies of life, we see this kind of idea. Basically your heart, your heart point, your heart energetic thing is basically the core of your energetic body, right? It's the core of the body of life that we live in, the thing outside of our physical body that is our metaphysical being. And when we go through life and we do things that are bad, we do things that are viceful, we do things that are sinful, it pollutes that heart, right? And gives us diseases. And the only way to purify ourselves from these diseases is in this book's idea to turn to Allah or the God of Islam. Now, that's a really good explanation for miasma. So we're gonna take that explanation, transpose it onto paganism. Syncretism, woo! Basically, it just explains it better because if you look at like a lot of old writings on miasma proper, they're like weird, confusing things. Basically, the pagan argument is that miasma is something we accrue through our experiences and it pollutes our soul. And the way to get rid of it is through a process known as catharsis. If you know the word catharsis, it's that. So it's basically doing a release to purge ourselves 
of these miasmic feelings. I personally believe a lot of um, unhealthy behaviors and habits that people have are actually kind of a secular seeking out of catharsis. I think humans naturally crave catharsis. Um, if you've ever been really mad, what do you do? You scream, right? That is catharsis. It's a release. Now, I think when we divorce this from a spiritual context, we get a lot of really unhealthy things like people punching walls or developing a condition like bulimia nervosa, right? Purgative behaviors that get rid of the pollution inside of us. But since those are not aligned with the gods, obviously both those things are bad, right? They're never going to give you that spiritual release that you need. And the way that it is done is through seeking out the gods. Specifically, there is an epithet used to get rid of catharsis called Zeus Catharsius. Because since Zeus is the king of the gods, he relates to justice. And what is the root of all miasma? Going against the laws of the gods, right? I was actually reading Plato the other night, and Plato made a really interesting argument. He defined piety as what is favored by the gods and impiety as the things the gods hate. And we think about it that way and we divorce ourselves from just supplanting a Christian idea of sin onto paganism. We actually consider what piety is, what the gods like, what the gods represent. We see that anything that is not loved by the gods, the Plato piety, are miasmic things and that can be reduced and removed by Zeus Catharsis, meaning that the purification of the soul from miasma and turning it towards the pursuit of the gods is a Jupiterian mystery. And once you do that, you become more pure as you, as you ascend, I hate that phrasing, but as you ascend, as you get closer to the gods, as you get closer to union, which is the end goal of all mysticism, you become more pure, right? You're more detached from the miasma of the world. You're more detached from the things that are holding you back from your true will and the great work, right? You're, you're closer to divinity. These things that relate to Jupiter make more sense. And Jupiter, when he purifies you of miasma, is opening the road. He's giving you that path to expand your soul closer and closer to the Godhead itself. Jupiter is the path. Jupiter is the way up. Jupiter is the way to climb the tree of life and unite with the gods himself, right? Jupiter is that way forward. And until you are able to detach and remove yourself from those things that do not serve you and that are miasmic, you cannot even understand Jupiter. And when I was sitting to make this video, the reason why it's delayed is because I had so much trouble making this video because no one talks about Jupiter in this context. And thankfully my conversation with amateur makers really helped me out making this video, but no one understands Jupiter. Everyone sees Jupiter as the money planet. And of course, I'm going to put this in there. Money magic and Jupiter work really well. Now, you don't have to use Jupiter. You can use Mercury as well. I found a like quick money tends to come from Mercury. But if you're trying to say like start a new career or generally have more prosperity, Jupiter is great for that, right? Jupiter can help you reach a space of prosperity, right? Because Jupiter can expand your wallet. Jupiter can expand your stock portfolio, right? But to reduce Jupiter down to money is... Mm, Ick. I don't like it. I think we should see Jupiter as a complex deity who rules a lot of different things. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's the Jupiterian mystery. The Jupiterian mysteries are the entire concept of expansion. Expansion of the mind, expansion of the body, expansion of the psyche. Um, and in a sense, even though we see knowledge as Mercury, the pursuit of higher things is Jupiterian. And so Jupiter should be part of your practice. I mean, Jupiter mysteries can help you learn so much and understand so much more about the world. And it's just such a complex thing, right? Because there's so much in our lives that we strive to expand. I mean, in a sense, what is mysticism? Mysticism is the pursuit of something higher and is not the pursuit of something higher, the pursuit of union with the gods, the pursuit of the gods themselves, not an expansion. Is that not the desire to expand, the desire to grow, the desire to create, right? Is that not the ultimate part of our path towards the gods? And the answer is, it is. These mysteries are some of the most important mysteries. And I really don't think you should brush past them. I think that you should sit with them. And the reason why I sat with making this video for like a while is because there's so much I wanted to say. And, you know, it was hard for me to know how to say it because there is an abstract quality to Jupiter. There is a you see it and you kind of get it, but you don't really get it quality of Jupiter that you don't always see with the other planets. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you want more videos, please join my Patreon. I'm supported on Patreon. You get a bonus video every month. You get early access to every single video. Um, you get ritual guides, which I write every single month that are step-by-step -step techniques on how to do rituals. 
And you can book a mentorship session with me where I help you develop your path as well. I do sell tarot readings. Information for that will be in the description box below. Um, I am also hosting that group trip to, with Trova Trip to Greece. So that will also be below. Um, you can like, comment, subscribe and ring the bell. And if you subscribe for 93 days, you will meet your holy guardian angel. And isn't that awesome? And that's totally how it works. Kind of. Maybe it's just an intro or an outro. This is an outro. My mind has clearly not expanded throughout this video. And you can find me under every platform, under the sun, under dot darling, D-A-A-T, darling. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Have an amazing day, night, afternoon, mid-morning, mid-evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are.